At least last episode, that wasn't too controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make the video Lachlan talk shit on. All right, sitting here with PhD, Dr. Lachlan Giles, Australia's most accomplished black belt. <laughs> You're already trolling. All right, good. Sure. <laughs> All right, we'll start with some boring questions, uh, and then we'll get into some more uh, provocative questions. How long have you been training, and who gave you each belt? Oh, each belt. Uh, I've been training about 20 years now. I've got my blue belt and purple belt from Tyrone Cross, like a, essentially a Machado lineage, and brown belt from John Simon and black belt from John Simon. Um, and then John Simon stopped pretty much by the time I got my black belt he pretty much stopped training so um, at that time I was pretty much then like kind of self teaching you know teaching myself um, went to Brazil and did a bunch of training came back started Absolute and so that was with Tiago Stefanuti as the head coach so he gave me my first second and third degree and when did you predominantly go to Nogi when did you come to your senses? I still, I still do both. <laughs> uh, I do. I actually, yeah. I think I actually teach more gi classes than no gi classes. But um, no. I mean, I, st- I train in the train. I try to train in the gi like twice a week. But um, definitely, probably when we qualified for ADCC was when we started focusing more on our no gi. Obviously, like started looking at what what areas of the rule set were different between ADCC and the IBGF style and we tried to exploit them because it was going to be hard to beat the Brazilians at their own game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we wanted to work on wrestling and leg locks. Um, and we got good at one of those things. <laughs> yeah, still working on the wrestling thing. We'll see. I reckon in about 10 years I'll, you, I'll get there. You'll be Masters 4. That's the plan. <laughs> what was your first exposure two heel hooks and how were you inspired to steal down those moves <laughs> yeah so probably like 15 years ago I went to Henzo's and trained under Dan and that's how I learned them um, yeah, um, <laughs> now so I my first exposure actually was 50, like before before I got into 50-50 actually to me is older than some of the newer positions um, I remember Ryan Hall had his 50-50 instructional out and this is going back probably like 13 years ago. I watched that two weeks before the ADCC trials, which were held in Australia back then. What year was that? I don't know, actually. <laughs> I didn't win. I came second. Um, but um, I, was, I remember I watched Ryan Hall's DVD, and then I just said, grab one of my training partners. So let's just like train from here for like the two weeks leading up just to learn some heel hooks because I hadn't really trained it. Um, so that was my first exposure to it. Then I kind of went back to, I think I didn't even do the next ADCC trials. They were in like um, Malaysia or Singapore or something like that year. They, they didn't even do one in, sorry, the two years later. Yeah. Uh, and it was only the one after that that I actually qualified. Um, so I kind of I kind of focused back on Gi and IBGF and then going back, I started getting into heel hooks again. And I think probably actually watching... Um, we, we we started to work on heel hooks um, and probably watching like Eddie Cummings um, in EBI I remember he was in an EBI which had like Paolo Miao and, and some of those guys in it and I was kind of like because Eddie at that you, time you weren't a believer at the time I wasn't a believer <laughs> <laughs> heel hook skeptic yeah well no it's just kind of like, like at that time like Eddie Cummings and some of those guys had only really fought like guys that you hadn't really they weren't like doing like world championship level events and I thought Palomino was going to go in and run through that tournament but being sub only I think he lost in overtime yeah who did he lose to a wrestler like a right? MMA guy I think um, just on like back right time or something um, anyway Eddie Cummings won that and I was like oh, okay maybe there's yeah he looked very impressive with his leg look so that was when I kind of probably started paying attention to more of the I'll say newer slightly newer that are now old positions. Now old, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, saddle or outside ashy and so on. Uh, and then you broke my belief in outside ashy. So. <laughs> I actually wish we still had the footage because we both qualified in 2014 on separate teams. Um, I was still living in Adelaide 
and then to decide who got to do what weight division was it in 2016 we had a super fight in the gym yes. that lasted how long did that go for for we, probably, we probably think it went for ages but we probably didn't <laughs> I swear it was like double overtime or something yeah it was basically like we weren't going to have a, someone decided for points so we, we um, as in sorry we, it was like someone had to score points we didn't want a rest decision yeah um, yeah so we went to like went to like two or three overtimes no one could take the other guy to yeah. <laughs> yeah I wish we had that on film Probably she was still that level. Yeah. It probably looked terrible. <laughs> it probably looked terrible in a rewatch. It would, yeah. And yeah, and I was lucky because I got to do the heavy division where the guys weren't as talented, I think. And you had to stay at 77 and face JT Torres. Yeah, but you still had. Oh, in, oh well, that was when you fought. You had Leandro Lowe. I mean, it, that's hard. I wouldn't say he's. Yeah, but you were the champ either. first round, I guess. Yeah, well, you always had. He turned did, out to be the champ. Who right? did you had like, Wilbur <laughs> Burns, um, JT Torres, <laughs> Lucas Lepre, and then Kate. And then Kate Rotolo. It's been That's a terrible run. <laughs> they hate me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jason. Yeah. yeah. No, come on. <laughs> what did he do to you? Eddie Cummings. Do you think Eddie Cummings is the most influential of the DDS for you with leg locks? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, even now, like if I had to, if I had to study someone, like comp footage and so on, it would probably be him or, or Jason Rao or something. To like, I'd like those are the guys I'd probably look at to see. He still what pattern, like what patterns they're they're using to set up and enter and navigate through the, the league entanglements. Yeah, but I mean, it's hard to get. He's New become like a myth. He has. Yeah. He's gone, yeah. Uh, I saw him pop up in the background of a Henzo Gracie clip. Yeah. And then he was training again there, but I think the media attention and stuff, he dipped out again, didn't like it, doesn't like any attention. Yeah, right. I think he wants to train in obscurity. Really? Yeah. But can't do it. I'm sure he'd train with you if you went to New York. Yeah, that'd be really cool, actually. Your ADCC run in 2019. Yeah. And also talk about your most recent ADCC run. <laughs> Lack of a run, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, 2019, I, uh, in, in that open weight, so uh, obviously, like, I think, like, it was a few good things coming together. Like, I had a particular style of leg entry that happened to, and, and guard, and that was a little bit different, maybe, to, like, what most people were doing. It wasn't new, like, you know, well, yeah, you can't really make a new move anymore but like you can you can make like a, if you name it it's yours sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah so I had um, a bunch of big guys to, to get through and I just think like it was, an, it was different enough and I think especially like the guys in that weight division probably weren't training a ton of heel hook defense you know they're expecting to go in and have to wrestle and play top position and deal with like wrestle ups and so on so I think a few of the stars aligned for me and I was able to pull off some some nice heel hook wins 2022 ADCC was um, obviously I I knew people would expect that part of my game so I tried to add in a lot more like upper body attacks my guard retention is considerably better than it was in in 2019. It's cutting you out. My my guard retention was considerably better than it was in 2019. Um, So I was kind of trying to use my guard. Basically what I realized was people run away. Like when you start going, we try and make an attachment to go for someone's legs and they'll just like back out. So what are your options? You can wrestle up and I felt like I'm too old to to play the wrestle up game. Too old to wrestle, but... Young enough to like play a, fully in, inverted guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, no, nah, just, yeah, like the wrestle-up games, obviously it's extremely effective. And so, so is wrestling. It's just like, I don't know, I found whenever I was doing a lot of that, I'd get injured. And I don't think it's easy to, like, really pick up and excel to a high level when you're 36 years old. So I kind of sort of take a slightly different strategy which is kind of 
as I got more confident with my guard retention, it was like, let him in a bit so that it's harder to back out. Yeah. Like, give him an angle to, to come in for the pass. They're going to have to step a leg in or, an, or reach with an arm. I'll try to attach to it and and um, set up my attacks from there. And hopefully they come in close enough that they can't back out and I can um, attack from there. But obviously that, you know, you kind of need to take those really... It's the same with the wrestler. Like, if you want to make something happen, you have to give a ri- you got to like risk them getting front headlock and sprawling out and going for back takes and so on. the more you want to make it happen the more you have to risk so um, trying to find that balance and so the plan was to do that and obviously I had Cade um, who was probably like in some ways in some ways good but in some ways the worst matchup for my style as well because he liked like where I wanted to be like and set my interest up he also wants to be for his part like he's actually like very good at passing in those spots so uh I was hoping I could capitalize there. Obviously didn't. Um, but in some ways it was good as well because I knew he would actually like come in. He wasn't just going to like yeah, back out and run away the whole thing too. So that. like that's, that's um, yeah, I had a chance to go for things. Obviously it didn't work out. So Who did you think was going to win your division when you saw the brackets? Did you think Cade had a good chance? Oh, he had a chance, yeah. Cade, Mika, uh, GT Torres, Mickey, they would be like, Top picks, Dante Leon. Every honestly, like you, I looked at the whole bracket, he and was it was like, worst, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know who I wanted to fight. You know, yeah. I remember because uh, Flo messed up. We were meant to have a bracket reveal. Flo messed up and accidentally posted them. There was like a loophole to be able to see the brackets. So someone <laughs> told me that, and I figured out like a bunch of our first round opponents and, but I told you your first round opponent but yours was the only one that was off right yeah so you told me I was going to have Langecker yeah, yeah I was, I online was, it said Langlecker and for some reason so it's, I did like six weeks of training for like no <laughs> <laughs> this is the day before or day old I think it was like I two mean, hours yeah before. we found yeah. it like two hours yeah. early <laughs> and then I told I told the float I found all the people I wanted to know told them their first round match up and then I went to Flo and said hey you guys have got a problem yeah <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to take that down um, yeah but yeah, it didn't help too much. Yeah, that was funny because you told me I had Langacker, so I walked out. They walked, yeah, we had oh, to walk surprise, out with their yeah. opponent. And then Cade walks out, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm kind of like, oh, we're meant to stare. Like, am I fighting him? I thought I was going to fight. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> of the entire tournament, yours was the only one they messed up, and apparently it was because it was like a last minute switch. Because I think there was. Um, was it three Atos and three 10 Planet guys? Yeah, okay. But I think they changed the rules, or maybe two of each. And I think they changed the rules because they were like, all right, both these guys are 10th Planet, but they train at completely different gyms. Yeah. So I think they made it so they would face off in the semis yeah. rather than usually you'd face off second round. Yeah. Who's the most annoying training partner you've ever had? <laughs> <laughs> Annoying in what way? It bothers you the most. I mean, it would probably be you. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, we've got the hashtag. Yeah, yeah, that started there. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you're annoying because like things that work on everyone else just don't work on you, and you can do like one-handed guillotines and stuff. No one else can do that. That's from the cows, though. Yeah, I know. But, like, <laughs> come on, yeah. So. That's definitely very frustrating. Um, yeah, you. Who's <laughs> your most annoying Who's my training most partner? Annoying. I don't know. I don't know who bothers me the most. Probably someone like J-Rod. Yeah. Because J-Rod's only trained for two years and he can just pull off. He can see something done once, try it, and it works immediately. Yeah. Super athletic, super flexible. I feel like that's, that bothers... J-Rod probably bothers a lot of people. And he will smother people at any opportunity, hand over the mouth. Nicky Rod tried that on you today. Yeah, he did actually, yeah. That was, it worked actually. <laughs> so I was waiting for him to move, <laughs> and then I had to move. <laughs> Who was the best guy you rode with at B Team? And obviously, it's not Damien Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was good. Yeah, only, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get any easy rounds, did I? Best guy I rode with. Um, what do you? each of those guys do yeah. well? I mean, you, I, we just did specific we training. Did position, for yeah. yeah. Um, okay, each person, what did they do well? Um, I, 
pro- I'm, I'm mostly just spent the whole time playing God because I just get tired and I just <laughs> <laughs> when I get tired I'm like, I'll just play God. I didn't really want to try to wrestle because I got seminars and stuff and that's how I get injured usually. But that would have been probably hard anyway. Um, uh, what did each person do well? So like Nicky Rod, he he was like really nice. Like from North South, he had like very good. He was able to like like usually. Usually from north south, I can actually like recover and and snag onto a K guard or something. But like against him, I was like, oh, I've just got to like. He's getting in really deep. He would control my knee and was trying to pull it out. And I felt like, at best, I could just recover and just try to like escape. So I felt like his north south was probably the had a good run on the road. Like had the best pressure there. Um, who else was there? So. Um, Ethan Ethan had like nice duck under pass like as I'd recover he'd try to like duck under the leg get around Nicky was good at he sort of like started to as the roll went on started to kind of see my entries a bit more so he's like started making it really hard to get an entanglement on him and so he'd kind of like he was very good at just like making me cycle through the retention at the end yeah everyone was good Everyone else good. I was hoping you talk some shit about him. <laughs> <laughs> so how was um contrast the difference between ADCC twenty fifteen and obviously twenty twenty two? Was that in Brazil? Yeah. <laughs> you mean like the professionalism? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it was just like a Brazil was like they hired a basketball court for the day. I, I heard it was gonna be in like some famous stadium. I, think I was like, Oh, it's like at this famous stadium. But it clearly wasn't. Yeah, basketball court with puzzle mats down. Yeah, um, and we were just—I remember the warm-up area was just like kind of, it's like the storage room or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the, I can't um, remember. That. I just remember going out and getting destroyed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> having a free holiday. But even then, that even that ADCC, the I think every finals match went for like forty minutes. That's true. Like they yeah. all were just like boring fun. Like they were just like overtime people trying to wrestle who actually didn't really know. Yeah, because that was the, that was the one Calasans won the absolute, but didn't score. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say they didn't know how to wrestle. I'll take that back. <laughs> Rewind that. They knew, you know, like people who had probably just like, oh, I've got ADCC. I'll train a bit of wrestling, but weren't like kind of full time, um, you know, into it. So you yeah. end up with these stand up battles where no one would shoot. So obviously, like, there's a big focus on wrestling at the moment, which is kind of a young man's sport. What style of game do you see yourself playing when you're 45? Assuming you want to still show up to the gym and roll, are you going to become just the the half guard guy or put the gi back on, or what's the? What's <laughs> what's the, uh, the <laughs> I want to make as much money as I can, yeah, and then never have anything to do with teaching or any of that aspect. I just want to show up and train, have fun. But in terms of what style, I'd probably go the old annoying MMA guy style. I'll probably be like. Eduardo Tellers, Turtle Guard, yeah. just playing out of Turtle looking for reversals. Um, <clears throat> when I'm young, I talk shit about the guys that just don't want to get submitted. But as I get older, I'll proudly become that person. And sure. success to me will be not getting submitted by the younger people, bothering yeah. them, bothering yeah. them immensely that they can't submit an older guy. Oh, so you mean like this stuff? Yeah. yeah, this survival, just surviving. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll market it and still release a DVD maybe. Like, I'm just looking at the classes you've got here. Like, everyone's wrestling um, a lot. Do you feel like, how do you feel? Like, what, what's, your, what's your oldest student? Um, it was a guy with gray hair here. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old he is, actually. I don't know. I think you like, can. Do you, do you think um, you can wrestle safely? I think you can find a way to wrestle safely. Yeah. I think you just got to pick your training partners, you know? Some guys I wouldn't want to wrestle with, Nicky Rod. Yeah. I barely want to roll with also Nicky Rod. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do wonder, like, yeah, because obviously I'm a, a gym owner as well, but whether, like, the direction it's heading will make jiu-jitsu less accessible for your oh, yeah. everyday person, if that makes sense. You know? For sure. Like, it depends. I mean, or do you end up with two different streams and almost, like, you've got your either your gyms or your classes within the gyms that are kind of, more the I've got to say like more old school style Jiu Jitsu where it's kind of you know, pass and sweep yeah, true. positions um, and then you've got your competitors who are doing the wrestle up 
Yeah, definitely. The direction Jiu-Jitsu is heading is heading away from a bunch of 35-year-old blue belts that start later yeah. in life and can keep up. I definitely think it's heading away from that. But I think it's a better form of Jiu-Jitsu, more exciting to watch. Yeah. But I also think you can still do it. I know people that can play, that like they can like flow roll, but they can't flow wrestle. So yeah. I think it's like they lack the technique on the feet to be able to flow around from there and it just turns into an all out fight. Yeah. But I think there's a balance between the two. You know, like a lot of the times in here we'll wrestle, but we won't do any big lifts on each other. Yeah. You know, and we'll enter like sort of what you were doing with JB today, those grounded wrestling scrambles like yep. switches funk rolls I think that style of wrestling you can do that at a later age for sure yeah anything where you don't have to stand up yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you stand up from turtle I feel like it's much safer much safer any sort of turtle game if things go bad just turtle is yep. a good safe strategy we can't all be 36 years old fully inverted so <laughs> 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 no, yeah, I agree yeah 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 no, I'm actually trying to, I'm like, I mean, I'm playing that style here because I'm kind of forced to play like my best, but I'm trying to, I'll stop stretching actually just because I want to, as a coach, I want, I don't want to have my attributes, like when I'm teaching someone, I don't want to be like, I can do it, but they won't be able to sort of thing. Yep, yeah. Yeah, so I'm trying to. And you're a big man on recovery, ice baths, sauna. Am I right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do any recovery stuff like that? Uh, I feel like that's like, like you're, when you do something like that, you know, like the, if you look at like the football teams and so on and this, the research they do on those, it's like, if, if it helps, it's like very minuscule, like one to 2% probably in terms of recovery. And you could just roll. Yeah. If, if you, if you rolled that less less one or two minutes in your whole training day, it's probably got the same effect of... Of that recovery. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, just do a little bit less training. Yeah, I think, like, obviously, it, I suppose it makes sense if you want to have your training volume so high that, and, you know, everything's, like, very strict like that. You, you want to do everything you can outside of that. But, you know, if you want... If you're just trying to, especially at the moment, like, just enjoying your training. Like, I don't enjoy ice baths. So no, and I don't I get... Do it? Some people will get up early to do a sauna and an ice bath, and I'm like, the sleep sleeping longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you lo- Look, love? I mean, that? we've evolved, like, we're, we're pretty good at recovering. Like, our body can recover quite well itself. It's going to do most of the work, you know. So, the idea that, just the general idea that you can do something external that's going to be better than what your body naturally Are does. Are you talking like, about it's, steroids? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, I, I'm just, I'm usually skeptical of most things, but like, I think those some, things like ice baths, I think there's some evidence, but, but even why, why do they work is another question. Cause like I went to a lecture on it and I think they put like a, a little pin in, like actually you have to like pierce the muscle to measure the temperature change. So if you're trying to cool down a muscle, I think someone was in an ice bath for 13 minutes to cool the muscle down one degree. Oh, wow so like if it is having an effect what's the physiological reason because it might not be actually the cooling of the muscle maybe there's some other reason I, I just probably, it probably has a pretty good placebo effect of being to put yourself through something horrendous so you want, you want it to work <laughs> people, how many people ask you questions like that but all they've listened to is podcasts or watch YouTube yeah. videos on the topic yeah but I just let you know if they want to do it there's not, not really any harm so if someone wants to do things, like yeah. I mean yeah. It probably helps a bit, so go for it. Yeah, yeah. That's my diplomatic answer. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't do any weightlifting? No. Why, why not? Because Marcelo didn't? Yeah, that was the main reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't I do weights? I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, I think there's like, like a, there's a decent, art, more of an argument for weights than ice baths, I think, like as in like strength trainings shown to be good for like injury prevention and actual performance as well um so i probably should but i don't i don't enjoy it <laughs> um for the most part like usually for me when i'm training it's, it's kind of like what do i want to spend my time doing you know if i do time if i spend my time doing weights that's time i'm not going to train like as in like i'll actually have to have a session off and i've always got technical things i'm trying to fix so it's just like 
you know, usually when I lose a match, like I lost to Kate, for example, he armbarred me. That was just as an example. No, that's just what came to my head just then. But like strength training wouldn't have helped me do that. But technical adjustment would have, you know, had I. So if I spend my time fixing my you know, elbow to knee connection or just like even just becoming aware of the, the possibility of the armbar risk. So Nikki went to do that on me today and I oh, yeah, slipped just. it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, uh, although I didn't even see that one coming, so I still need to work it. But yeah, for me, like just spending my time training is more enjoyable and I always feel like there's a technical adjustment that I could do to improve. Yeah. See. But I think actually that's probably, especially for like wrestling-based things, I think the strength training probably helps more and that's probably an area I should have worked on, but here we are. I take the different approach because I lost to Kainan and thought I just need to be stronger than him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon? There'd be some nah. technical things that you could... Yeah, obviously it's technical things, but I think ADA would be better <clears throat> to go back down ADA. Yeah. You know, so, My right. thoughts are with that is um, the Z guard's hard against someone bigger who can... Like, he just holds the foot. Yeah. They can slowly, like, sprawl. Something I've never fixed is that if nothing's happening, I'll eventually make a terrible decision. <laughs> if it's a waiting game, yeah, yeah. I'll lose that battle. <laughs> I just get bored out there. Why do you sell so many instructionals, yet tons of world champions can't even sell a single instructional? Uh, so, <clears throat> Oh, so if you look at, I mean, if you, even if you look at the, the what they're doing in like skill acquisition research, there's there's a pretty strong theory that what you there's knowledge of and knowledge about, and basically, like as in like you can know, you can know like you could explain to someone jujitsu and be terrible at it. You could be an ex, which like you could be a really good coach, but terrible at actually implementing it, and then you could be really good at implementing it, but not actually know what you're doing um so there's actually a huge disconnect between i think being good at explaining jiu-jitsu and actually being good at jiu-jitsu um obviously so so I, I don't even like i think some people think that like you know if you watch the best guy and like, if you watch gordon ryan pass guard that he's like thinking through everything which i just don't think is true he's I think his thought processes have helped him in his training. Like he, he's probably paying attention to like one, he's like, oh, I need to like, you know, this guy's going to do this. And he's, he's paying attention to like one particular thing at a time, but he's doing all these other things that he's actually unaware of while he's passing the gut, for example. How, you know, like where he's, the little battles that are going on with his feet and his knee line. And a lot, a lot of those might have been like trained earlier. Like, you know, he might've, previously at some point in time focused on his knee position but now that's kind of like automatic almost um but I, and I think even a lot of the adjustments and innovations we do we do them first and then we rationalize them afterwards but I mean that's a good way to I think you know that's that allows us to share it with a lot of these things are not like obvious to people and they don't come to that of their own you know some of the little pummels you do um no one else is doing them you have to actually like explain to them that this is like a an option you've got from that position so i think uh, but you have to then be you have to be aware of it so um it, long and short of it is i think being a good coach and being a good competitor are not necessarily one-to-one -one. um so i'm, I'm kind of lucky i mean I, I think they're kind of separate and there probably should be a lot more coaches who aren't good competitors who are selling a lot of instructional that's actually what i think <laughs> like there should be more people who are just good at, good, good at explaining jiu-jitsu that are famous, but for, for whatever reason, and I think there's some validity to it, but like people want the credibility of someone actually being, you know, knowing that that person can, what they're showing actually works and it scales up, you know, because an issue, if you've got a coach saying something who hasn't, let's say they haven't competed and then you watch them roll with like, you know, it's a black belt and you watch them roll with a blue belt and they really struggle, you'd be like, is the move they're showing actually good? You know, there's the, there's the, always that question mark. If a world champion shows a move, you, you know it works, they just might not be good at explaining it. So I'm lucky that I've, I think I get a little bit of both worlds there. <clears throat> yeah, balance both. Hey, it's crazy how many people are so accomplished, but just nobody wants to learn from them at all. Mind-blowing. Yeah. 
I think that's, yeah, I mean, a little bit about the style as well, right? And, like, and we, I feel like we sound smarter because of the accents. Yeah. I feel like it does help us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to me, you don't, Greg. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your biggest influence in your entire jiu-jitsu career and why was it Kit Dale? Kit Dale actually like Kit, a lot of people I think they don't know him and they, they think he's like not actually any good Kit's really good he used to like, beat the shit out of us yeah, yeah he's so good <laughs> uh, he just never like I just don't think he really wanted it like he kind of like he would train but he was never like didn't care yeah, yeah he was never like so full onto it Kit was so good at just like you'd bring something new and then like the next day he'd kind of like processed what's going on and he'd have like a solution you know he, so the, like he helped me so much I started training with him as a brown belt and I think he was a purple belt I was a brown belt but I was trying to I was trying to learn the Baron Ball I was studying the Mendes brothers and every day I'd try to try to get him and like maybe one day I'd start to get like a little bit of an angle and then the next day he'd shut it down and that would make me go back and watch more footage of the Mendes brothers and see how they deal with that reaction and you know I felt like you know he was to be honest he was always ahead of me and it was kind of making me like do this though so it brought my level up a lot I felt like it'd be frustrating because he would improve but not put in the same amount of effort yeah <laughs> yeah but you gotta I mean the reality is not everyone you know like actually people's ability to learn is not uniform amongst like not everyone in the room is gonna learn at the same rate and someone like Kit I think is like at the highest, like the rate of learning for him is so high. And you, like we, you know, for me, if I want to catch up to that, I have to put in maybe 10 times as much work or just concepts. There you go, kid. Concepts. Yeah. Well, <laughs> J-Rod's like that for sure. J-Rod's never drilled any techniques. Yeah. He might try it one time, but it's the same. He just can learn on the fly super well. It's super rare to find people like that. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, that's what the... That, like I was talking about the skill acquisition research there's a, there's a lot of things saying you should almost just like focus on the task and let your body find the right solution you know like you you kind of come up with good solutions but which I think for I think for some people are really good at that but I wouldn't say that's a generally true statement and I think a lot of people for example get stuck without any real direction and input will get stuck for example you know, they'll just pass on their knees and they won't stand up. You know, that's like a classic. There's probably not as many of them nowadays, but they used to be. Once you know, like, at a certain age, though. Yeah, and, and there's always like little things that, that you, at least for me, that I pick up these days from someone else. And I'm like, wow, that's so much better than what I came up with from my own uh, exploration. Um, and that's when you rename it? And yeah. Put it in the structure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's some people who I think are just like very good at that. Yeah. <clears throat> but you're like that too so. no I mean but I watch a lot of tape you do I feel like yeah. J-Rod he doesn't even watch tape he just it's crazy he just learns it the thing, I think the I think someone like that in, in a room like this is actually a, it's a, a viable strategy because they're only going to get away with good, good, works, good yeah. movement solutions does that make sense so like, like buggy checks <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think like because yeah, I imagine J Rod's mostly rolling with a lot of the top guys here. So like he'll try a whole bunch of things that don't work and then he finds like certain movements that actually do work really well for him. Um and then of course the those movements scale up because he's already trying them against the best guys. But if you develop your movements against white and blue belts, he probably gets a whole bunch of what I would say is almost bad habits that when he tries to do them against you guys it won't work so I think it's you almost need a room like this for someone like that to to emerge yeah, what do the, you reckon yeah I think so but I think also he just doesn't care about losing like in the, yeah. in the gym yeah, yeah. like yeah. if he gets messed up does not bother him in the slightest yeah. just happy to try stuff all the time where again I think people's egos obviously get in the way for sure obviously I'm not in Australia but B team's kind of like the Australian embassy. All the Aussies come through, except for those un-Australian traders 
they go to the enemy team in town, New Wave. Oh, wow. <laughs> but what up-and-coming Aussies <laughs> are there? Because uh, obviously I'm not exposed to them back in Australia, but who do you think will be the next big names come out of Australia? Next big names come out of Australia. Yeah, who, who do you think could make an impact on the sport? So we're trying to, like, we're thinking of someone who's, like, coming up that... Um, yeah, just any, I mean, just you can just shout out any guys that you see competing uh, around the I think. mean, you've got, you've got guys that have come here a fair bit, like um, Kaya comes here a lot, and De- Declan's been here a bit, obviously Hodge is here at the moment, So, the, but these are guys that have, like, been around, I don't know, would you say they're up and coming, or are they... Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. But yeah. I guess when I had my moment, I didn't. I mean, you too. We'd already been yeah. slugging it for a long time, just no one paying attention. I've got like you know, like <laughs> training with us. I mean, we've got like it's Levi. It's he, but he's not up and coming, is he? I mean, he's kind of true, true. Yeah, yeah I guess well, I'd say so Levi, Levi in the nogi. I guess you could say he is. Levi's really good. Yeah, that's so. what I mean. I mean, up and coming like hasn't reached that potential. Impact yeah. on the sport. Yeah, I mean, I think Levi will be a really interesting one. Um, he start like he's all round his jiu-jitsu is awesome, and then he's starting to like train a lot of wrestling and just getting familiar with the leg game now. So, um, and he's like an innovator as well, right? He does some stuff that's a bit different, but um, yeah, including his hair. <laughs> 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 no, he's really good. Um, so, I, so yeah, he's been training with us. We've got like two of the trials medalists of. Um, joint Borak and Siraj are, are training with us now. Um, Borak with a, uh, a win over you. No. <laughs> <laughs> he reminds me every day. <laughs> um, Borak does to me what if I beat Gordon, I'll do to him. Yeah. I'll share it for the rest of the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, then we've got a bunch of guys at the, you know, that have been training with us for a while. Um, some young guys like Hugh and I wish Harry Scott he hasn't been training for a little while but he was like I coming along really well young kid um, Do you even like a like a 66 kilo wrestler Aaron Ma he's, he's, he's like taken to jiu-jitsu really well so yeah I'm going to miss a whole bunch of people so I hate when people ask me this question <laughs> I walk I walk out and I'm like oh I forgot to say that person. oh but I mean I've just been talking about the guy, like the, the women actually in Australia well, yeah, where did this part out now okay <laughs> 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 but the women are actually I think there's like a lot that are coming we just had three uh, Nogi world champions uh, in oh yeah, yeah. so there was uh, Nora Nora yeah we had Nora Nadia yeah. we claim and, Nora for sure we claim <laughs> Nadia was here for a day we'll claim her as well she was here for a day <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Nora Nadia um, and then there was Adele uh, who won brown belt as well she also won the trials in Australia so, she yeah, so the three Nadia in the final of the trials right yes yeah. have so they had a rematch again since yeah they had, they had a rematch at Boa so Adele's two still, and a. yeah maybe even more I'm not sure yeah but um, yeah so I think those you know there's some promising prospects there it was good to have Lachlan back. Lachlan probably missed me, but after spending two days here at B Team, it'll probably be another five years before he ever makes a return. Well, mostly because I'm having a kid, another second kid. So, um, yeah, it's going to be hard to travel again. But, yeah, thanks for having me. It's been really good. So, I'm now officially an Australian now that I've come to the B Team, I think. Yeah, yeah. you're not welcome in New Wave. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's true. <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram or if you want to check out my instructionals, check out. Um, I've got an online training website, submeta.io, um, or, and some instructions on BGJ Fanatics too.